Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. This is Mastura with the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism. Question came up this morning when I was speaking with someone from our community. And the question is about that fine line between being in your humility and dropping into unworthiness. So impromptu, spur of the moment, I called up one of my favorite people in the world, Dr. John Wadud Laird, and I'm putting him on the spot here for an impromptu teaching about that topic. Dr. Laird, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ms. Stura. I um, just have to turn my phone off here so we don't get uh, interrupted. Good idea. Um, I don't know why you contact me about unworthiness, but boy, has that been a hard one for me. I remember early on, I'd receive healings and really would do the work and clear whatever the issue was of the picture. And uh, I was aware that like a lot of light would be pouring in. I mean, literally pouring in. And I couldn't accept it. It was just like it would go boink off the top of my head. <laughs> it, was, it was like standing in the middle of a rainstorm and not getting wet. It was so bizarre. And it went on for, I don't know, maybe a year. And it was, uh, you know, my understanding of it was, at the time, and in retrospect, it was all about, quote, I'm not worthy to accept the, the blessings and the beauty of, of God. And, but I can tell you, it was one of the most frustrating and, uh, uh, what would you say, self-inflicted pain that <laughs> I've ever experienced. Um, so if we start with the unworthiness uh, part of it, um, <clears throat> which is, I guess, where we started, um, CD says, Sidi Muhammad al-Jamal, our Sufi guide, has written uh, clearly on this, that he says, uh, our work is to purify the different gifts that Allah has given us. So one of those gifts is hearing. We purify our hearing by giving our hearing, taking our hearing away from things like gossip or toxic discussions, fear-based discussions, and so on and so forth. And what he says is train the ear to hear all the voice of all that is good. So the voice of all that is good, in my understanding, is the voice of God. So the voice of God, at least in my experience personally, and as a teacher, uh, having worked with thousands of students by now, is that the voice of God doesn't say you are unworthy. It's just unworthiness, uh, I believe, this is from me, not from CD, is, is not in God's vocabulary, vocabulary. It's a human creation. It's, it's a picture, it's a, it's a story we tell ourselves to explain our pain, to explain whatever we didn't receive, to, to, put a, to impose a meaning on top of, a, of disappointment or pain or trauma. So for me, unworthiness, the, the way I go at it is this is a story, it's a belief, it's something we've created as best we could out of difficult circumstances, but it doesn't carry truth. And that's the key thing that whatever we create out of that psychology might be out of something that's happened to us factually, but the belief that we're unworthy is just not true. So I think the first challenge for people is to accept that premise because we live as if unworthiness is the truth. And somehow then we have to navigate life and get the best that we can out of it. Uh, living from the container of unworthiness. So <clears throat> it takes a certain level of um, courage and a certain level of uh, intellect, you could say, uh, to, to just decide that being unworthy does not carry truth with a capital T. Truth with a capital T in this discussion would be what comes from Allah directly. So if we're living in the in the world of unworthiness, and it's time to get a second opinion. We've already got the opinion from our wounded or constricted ego or self-identity, so let's get a second opinion from God. So that is the basic work of, of healing in this way, which is distinguishing unworthiness as a belief, as a pattern, as something from the ego or the nafs, and then bringing the various um, healing 
uh, approaches to begin to to discharge that and to clear that through the practice of talba, the practice of remembrance, um, practice of prayer, many different things like that. <clears throat> so, uh, unworthiness is a it's a sickness of the heart. So we treat it with the spiritual therapy to help uh, open the heart. And as Sidi has said, the diseases of the heart can be more challenging to clear than the diseases of the body. Now, if we go to humility, um, humility can also come from the nafs. It can come from a way of navigating the world. Oh, I'm... I'm so humble and and uh, I'm I'm nothing and that's a tricky thing too because Sidi says of himself he'd always say I am nothing I am less than the ant um, but he's not saying that from a lack of self worth he's saying that, he's not saying it because he had a bad day he's saying that because he understands the what he might word the rank of the human being compared to the rank of God. So humility, from if it comes from the naf, is a way uh, can be a way of sort of a pseudo way of living, to um, to to uh, prevent the need to to stand strong or to be vital or to be a leader or whatever, or to um, appear arrogant, uh-huh. or to appear arrogant. Yeah, okay. well, humility can be an arrogance, and it can be a way to protect against the arrogance that's already there. Exactly. So yeah. I can yeah. I can cop to all that. I've I've had all of those pieces <laughs> within myself. So I guess this is why you called me. Yeah. <laughs> You're oh. so smart. So um thank you for the chance to learn. <laughs> so humility though I think uh, you, you might say the healthy humility it comes from gnosis. It comes from understanding the the glory of God. It comes from understanding the Tawheed, which we call the oneness of God, the aspects of God that are beyond understanding, beyond locality, beyond time, uh, beyond any conceptualization that we would have. And what that requires is just opening our eyes and looking at the world of nature, looking at the world of the cosmos, looking at the microscopic world, looking at the the incredible creation that the human being who's who's entered into the world of unity with uh, God and all of creation, um, looking at the flow of mercy in the creation, looking at the flow of healing, look at the flow of any of the qualities in creation, recognizing those come from God, there's a whole lot to be humble for. And so in that sense, the humility is becomes an act of worship, it becomes a whole posture of worship. So um, that's what comes to me today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Laird. And I, and I certainly did not call you because of your uh, glowing light of, of unworthiness. <laughs> <laughs> that is not why I called you at all, just to set the record straight. I called you because of, your, uh, of what I witnessed in you and have for many years as a... Um, a beloved of God and a beautiful teacher. So I thank you very much for sharing your wisdom and your truth with us today and um, look forward to many more. Thank you. Thank you. It was really fun. Thank you for the call. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Bye-bye.